Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. All right. It's 3 p.m. here in New York. I think we're ready to start things off. Steve, are you on the line? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. All right. So I wanted to welcome everyone to this afternoon's webinar. Today's session will be hosted by Steve Misick, who will be teaching us about basic charting techniques for various FX options strategies. Uh, Steve has been a longtime webinar host who has been trading since 1990. His experience is broad-based, and he's actively been trading equities, futures, forex, and options. Steve is licensed as a Series 3 Commodities Broker, Series 7 Securities Broker, and holds his NASDAQ Series 63 license. He was the Assistant Head Trader for the R&J Financial Hedge Fund, and he's also spent time at the Chicago Board of Trade where he was employed as a currency strategist for FX Chicago. We're excited to have him back. We should hopefully have some time at the end for some brief Q&A. So Steve, we're just going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thanks. Oh, right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully Steve Meisinger is feeling better. Tell him I do say hello and uh, kind of miss him here. Um, so hi, everybody. Uh, we got a lot to cover here. I'm kind of looking through um, just to see. I have the uh, power presentation here. And what I want to do is actually start the presentation. And we should have the recording going. All right. So, um, welcome again, and what we're going to talk about today is basic charting techniques for various option strategies, ISE FX option strategies. And of course, the ISC has um, options available on uh, quite a few of the indexes and some new ones that we've had since the last time we've done some webinars. We have the Australian dollar both in the spot market and the index. We also have the British pound now in the spot market, which is something new, the euro in the spot market, and the uh, New Zealand, which gives us the opportunity to trade, um, for those people that are more familiar with trading with the spot market, it gives you the opportunity to trade the charts the way they look in the spot market, which is um, you know a little confusing, especially if you're a brand new trader. Okay, You can also trade these as spreads, which is nice. And you're going to have some webinars coming up here uh, on spreads. There's a Condor webinar coming up here in a couple of weeks. You want to make sure you pay attention to that. After today's presentation, these ISE FX options are European-style exercise, which is great, too. Uh, you don't have to worry about that early exercise. It sometimes messes up your option strategies. And when they do settle, they settle in cash. Okay, and we have some more education on the ISC website, fxoptions.com. I use it all the time. Every time I need information for trading ISC FX options, it is a wonderful tool. They have the live vol. They have the trader forum. They have the news alerts. They have the uh, trading suggestions. So there's just so many things to go look at. If you get a chance, go out to www.fxoptions.com and spend some time out there if you're going to trade actively in the ISE FX options. And always a disclaimer here for what we're talking about. There's no specific trade recommendations being presented here today. We're just talking about how to do it for yourself. Uh, most of you that are out there are interested in learning how to trade for yourself. You want to take control of your money. And so I'm going to give you some strategies. But then again, it has to be uh, some something that you decide works for you before you actually dive into it. So make sure that you read your standardized risks and options of the standardized options, and you can get a copy either from the Options Clearing Corporation or from the broker that you plan on doing business with. And um, with that, let's move in here. Uh, the first slide just about every time I come on and I talk about trading, I always talk about uh, the personality of the person that actually wants to become a trader. And it's just so important, and more and more th 
that I teach, I realize that everybody has a different personality. And to become successful, either as a trader or as a long-term investor, you really need to understand yourself before you step into trading for a living. You're the only person that really knows how much trading capital you have, how much uh, time you have to devote to trading, what assets you're interested in right now, either as a trading vehicle or as an investment. So I'm going to suggest um, before you dive into the charts and before you dive into technical analysis and using the charts, that you sit down and write down on paper and make sure it's on paper someplace where you can look at it what your goals are for trading. Uh, right now, it's probably, well, my goal is is that I want to make a lot of money. But uh, if you want to actually make a lot of money, you're really going to have to work on finding something called a trader's niche. And a trader's niche basically is you finding what kind of style of trading works for you. And then once you do that, this will seem like um, very, very easy and very, very exciting. And if you're going to be your own personal trading coach, you should spend as much time on personal and trading psychology as you possibly can. And as I said, most people want to jump right into the charts and just begin trading, uh, or they hear an idea on TV and they think, oh, this is great, I'm going to just jump in. Uh, but it, it's not the, it doesn't work that way. And I, I can tell you from teaching as long as I have and from trading as long as I have, if I only knew back when I first started how much my personality would affect my trading, um, I would have saved myself years and years of frustration. Okay, It is a process, and if it's going to be a process, I would suggest on the Internet, whatever way, shape, or form you can do it, you should seek help. And when I say seek help, on our website, tradingacademy.com, we have lessons from the pros. We have specialty articles just on the trading psychology business. And there are plenty of professional uh, psychologists who are also traders on the Internet. Trading psychology, if you Google it, you'll bring up some, some great names that are big-time uh, big traders and psychiatrists in the business, Dr. Elders, um, Van Tharp. Uh, there's quite a few of them. So I would do this. I would... Spend some time writing down my goals, thinking of what I want to do and what kind of trader I want to become. And then I would spend some time working on um, my psychology. And that means taking trader profile tests, anything you, can, anything you can do to find out as much as you can about yourself. So we're here to help you. If you decide at any point in time the Online Trading Academy, uh, we have facilities all over the world. I get to travel to all these facilities all over the world. We teach all the different asset classes. We teach all the different styles of trading, such as short-term trading, swing position trading. That's one of the things about the psychology of trading. You may think you want to be a high-speed day trader, and it may turn out your personality is more geared towards swing trading or position trading. You can take our classes on site in any of the locations. If you go out to our website, you can look for a facility close to you. And beyond that, we have electronic classroom support afterwards. And uh, we even have Dr. Woody Johnson, who is a trained psychiatrist. He writes those articles on specialty um, trading. And he does, in our electronic classroom, he does spend time with each one of the asset classes answering questions for people that have problems with trading psychology. So our education path is basically you would go to a free workshop somewhere near your area. If you decide that you want to take a class, you would probably want to take the professional trader class where we teach our core strategies of trading. And then you can branch out into one of the areas such as Forex options, futures if you want. Um, and beyond that, you can also go into the extended learning program. So this would be the path that you want to take, and it all starts with just attending a workshop and seeing uh, if we fit with you and if you fit with us. Our core foundation strategy is all based around the same thing, and I talk about it every time I come on here, and it's support, resistance, and trends. And when we talk about support and resistance, we're talking about um, areas where prices have turned in the past based on large resting institutional orders to buy and sell, 
And that's why we call it true support or demand, uh, true resistance or supply. Um, think about this. If there's 50,000 orders to buy at a certain price level, and when price visits that area, there's only 5,000 orders to sell. Uh, mathematically, once you fill that last sell order and you've still got 45,000 orders to buy, uh, which, which way is price likely to go? It's probably going to bounce higher in search of more sell orders. So that's why the true support and resistance um, that was taught to me by our director of education, Sam Seiden, he handled those institutional order flows at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange years ago, and he said, it doesn't matter what price does when it gets to those orders. Those are real orders that have to be filled, and until every one of those orders is filled, price is probably not going anywhere. All right, I say to him, that's great. What does that look like on a price chart? Well, we're going to talk about that today. And then we're going to talk about trends. For Sam, trends is, was nothing but price going from one pile of buy orders on his desk to another pile of sell orders on his desk. But if you're going to be a position trader or a swing trader, somebody that's not going to be actively trading on a daily basis, then trends are going to matter very much to you. And if you are going to be a position trader, you're probably going to trade long-term secular type trends. If you're going to be a swing trader or a position trader, you may trade a cyclical trend. And if you're going to be a day trader, you're going to be trading a short-term trend. So we're going to talk about support and resistance and trends and how we can use that with various ISE FX option strategies. So the textbook definition of support that everybody teaches you is support is a price level where prices have turned in the past because there's more willing buyers and sellers. The buyers believing the assets undervalued are buying. They prevent prices from going lower. And of course, resistance is an area where sellers believe an asset has become overvalued, and so they begin to sell. And sometimes they're selling to open new short positions or they're selling to take profits on long positions. But whatever the selling is, it resists price from going higher. So then, in the field, um, we teach all the different types of support and resistance, and there's many of them. There could be pivot points, uh, moving averages, Fibonacci analysis, trend line, uh, everything that could be taught to you that is likely to be a point where prices have turned in the past is pointed out to you so that you're aware of where those orders are and where prices are likely to turn. However, the orders that are created when large institutions call up, and they usually call up first thing in the morning, they want to buy on the open, or maybe they'll call later in the day because they want to sell on the close of the market. And what they'll do is they'll place these large resting orders, and they'll leave those orders at those price levels until those orders are filled. And until all that institutional order flow is filled, prices are likely to go sideways. And if they do go sideways, that's going to be a market that is not trending. That's going to be a channeling market. If you absorb all the buy orders at the price, then, of course, prices are going to go lower looking for more buyers. And if you absorb all the sell orders at that price, then prices are going to go higher looking for more sellers. And that's when a trend move is going to begin. So oftentimes, market turning points, which we call peaks or troughs, occur near these past areas where this has happened in the past. So looking to the left of your chart is going to give you a little bit of an idea where prices are likely to turn in the future. That sideways trading can be either an accumulation if price happens to stay inside the channel and then break out to the upside, it would indicate an accumulation followed by a new uptrend. If prices happen to trade sideways near a top, that could be what we call a stage three top. And if prices break out to the downside, you will begin a new downtrend. So which way it breaks out is not really that important. Once you know which way it breaks out, once you let the market tell you which way the market wants to go, then you can have rules for how to buy and sell that market. I'm showing in this chart here, which is a picture of the Euro futures contract and this is from January 9th of uh, this year. Now, I do webinars here, and I also do uh, a radio show for Online Trading Academy called Power Trading Radio, and I'm a guest. And every so often I'll go on the show, and we'll have an opportunity to talk about an upcoming trading idea. 
Well, this was the euro pulling back into an area where prices had rallied significantly back in August of last year. And so the first time back to that area, prices pulling into the area, I'm talking about this being a buying opportunity. Of course, the news is going to be telling you that it's probably not a great buying opportunity. It's probably going to be resistance. And they're probably saying at this point in time that prices aren't going to go higher. And the reason they're saying that prices aren't going to go higher is because the news at the time is always going to be bad. They're talking about how the euro is going to go away at this time. And most of the time, the people that are talking about that are usually people that are already short the euro, and they're wanting you to be selling. But if you're going to be selling into the origin of that large rally, and the large rally that I'm talking about is this rally right here, this big rally that starts back here. If you're going to be selling into that rally, you're going to be selling after a drop in price, and you're going to be selling right into an area where the chart is telling you demand exceeds supply based on that large rally. And then, of course, at the end of the week, the news changes to this. To sum it up in the FX market, the spotlight must surely focus on the dramatic rally in the euro dollar that swept us off the 128.75 lows on Monday and now, less than five days later, delivers us to a fresh 2011 high above 134.50. And at this point, they're not sure why it happened. They're saying it could simply be a short squeeze of immense proportions, or it could be symptomatic of a deeper change in sentiment for long downtrodden euro. Well, when they say that, folks, that's pretty much telling you that um, the trend is likely to be changing at that point. And obviously, that great big candle that you saw is a reversal candle. But now psychologically let's think this through depending on what kind of trader you are you may be a trader who believes the euro is going to go away and you may be holding that short position as a result because you like to trade what we call the longer term trends or the secular trends if you really believe the news now that the dollar is going to go much lower because of all the quantitative easing that the Fed is doing, then you're going to have a very, very hard, hard time going long the U.S. dollar. Um, this is a bias. And if you have a bias and you're a trader or an investor, it can be your worst enemy. And the reason is, is because no trend lasts forever. And if you're trading leveraged instruments such as the Forex market, um, the options that you're going to buy or sell, or if you're trading a market like the silver market or the gold market, your bias can force you to destroy your trading capital very, very quickly. So you, as a trader and an investor, have to teach yourself how not to let that bias, which basically you're going to have um, an opinion about what you think the market is going to do, but at some point in time, you're going to have to say, if the market does this, I am wrong. Uh, I can't point out anything better than that. I was a guest on our radio show on 4-5, and I was talking about this absolutely ballistic, parabolic move that the silver market was experiencing. And my best advice to people that had to have silver at that point in time was that they needed to trail their stop loss to the previous week's low in this kind of parabolic market. If you trailed your stop loss to the low of the previous week below $45 on that long position, uh, you didn't get hurt by this big reversal. And believe me, when you're trading a leveraged instrument like silver and you see where the volume in the silver exchange traded fund and in the silver market itself is even greater than the S&P 500 volume, you probably have reached some kind of a saturation point. And that's exactly what happened in that market. And this is actually the roller coaster or cycle of your emotions that you're going to experience when you start to trade. If you're somebody that starts off trading and you become successful right away because you're buying in a bull market or you're selling short in a bear market, you'll become optimistic followed by excited. You'll get to the point where you get thrilled about what you're doing and then comes the dangerous point, which is euphoric. And when you get the euphoric, folks, and you're talking to somebody that went through all of these emotions in the 2000 bubble. So I could tell you firsthand that in the 2000 stock market bubble, 
I was a genius, all right? Unfortunately, when the market turned, I took a ride on the, um, let's call it the uh, elevator to the basement. I did get off before I reached the bottom here. Just about the time I got scared I was going to give back all my profits, I followed my first trading rule, which was to sell and at least keep half the money I made in the 2000 bull market. And of course, if you happen to sell at some point in time and you don't go through the rest of those emotions, you're probably going to continue to be in the game. But if you get all the way down to the capitulation part and the despondency, and then the market turns like it did in 2009, um, you're going to be coming into that uh, euphoria part here, possibly, and you've got to be careful that you don't buy a market top. And I'm pointing this out again because on 5-1, um, I took this screenshot of the ISE Euro which is the dollar versus the euro, pulling into a daily support and a weekly support area at around 67.50. And I went on the radio show again, the Online Trading Academy radio show on 5.4, and I said, this is one of those situations where, yes, the dollar is going lower, but the last time we traded at 67.50 last year, demand definitely exceeded supply. Actually, it was two years ago. And I would rather be a buyer than a seller at that price level. And, of course, um, we heard at the beginning of that week how the stocks were weak and how the euro was expected to test the highs and possibly go for 150. And here we are at the end of the week on 5.7 with another great big bullish reversal candle for the dollar versus the euro. And, of course, now the news is well, the euro tumbled the most against the dollar since January on a rate signal. And, of course, um, the news can change that fast when you have a plunge in the commodities market, when you have fear, when you have something happening that doesn't make a lot of sense. All of a sudden, most of the currency traders are going to book their profits. And just as fast as that, you can go from a market that was in an extremely bearish downtrend into a, a very bullish reversal. And of course, if you know that the last time prices traded at 67.50, demand exceeded supply, which is what we teach our students, that pat, that chart pattern that you see over there to the left that I marked support, um, then you can have an idea where this turn is likely to happen. And if you are somebody that's a long-term dollar bear, at least you can use that information to take a profit. And if you're somebody that's looking for an entry, you can possibly go long at that point in time with a very, very small stop loss below that area of support. So this was the dollar index against the entire basket of currencies on 5.1, pulling into that support area on the monthly chart. And it's starting to rally again. And if you remember, we had this pullback in October of 2009, and it led to a very, very large rally at that point in time. And then we had another pullback in October of 2010 to the same area, and we had another large rally. And at the same time, this is the exchange-traded fund for the S&P 500, the spiders. And the spiders at the beginning of the week last week were rallying right into a large resistance area, the origin of a huge drop from way back in 2008. So we are experiencing a little bit of selling last week. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.